Hello gentle viewers, this is Avindian, welcoming you to a new tutorial series based on the popular Paradox Interactive game, sorry, Paradox Development Studio game, Crusader Kings 2, which takes place in the medieval era and has been described as a grand strategy RPG, which is quite frankly, you know, not totally out of base. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial series. Um, we're probably going to go to about four or five episodes, six at the outside, and just give you a sense of how to play Crusader Kings 2 and what to expect in your own games. Um, because of this, I have disabled all DLC, even though, as you can tell from here, I own almost all of them. Even ones I don't remember buying. Um, I have all but two of them, apparently. Um, I've had the game for a long time. I've played it a bunch. Not as much as some other people on Steam, but or uh, YouTube for that matter. But hopefully you'll still find this tutorial helpful. Um, in case you don't have it already, Crusader Kings 2 is, I believe, still free uh, because of the release of Crusader Kings 3, which is supposed to be coming out sometime in 2020, I believe. Um... I have my own opinions about Crusader Kings 3, and maybe I'll talk about them, and maybe I won't. But, what we're going to be talking about today, though, is how to play the game, and how to ensure your dynasty survives. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on Single Player. New game, please. Um, so as you can see, there are five start dates for Crusader Kings 2. Early Middle Ages, which you can get with the Charlemagne DLC. Viking Age, which you get from the Old Gods DLC. Uh, the Old Gods DLC is, I believe, also free if you sign up for the Paradox newsletter regarding Crusader Kings 3. The Iron Sentry, which I believe is a new start date. I don't think that was available on base game. And 1066 of uh, the High Middle Ages and later Middle Ages 1337. Uh, we're going to be playing on the High Middle Ages setting because for the longest time, this was the start date. Uh, this takes place before the, uh, actually, I believe after the Battle of Hastings, where William the Conqueror conquered a good bit of England. And we're going to click on Custom Game Setup, because we don't want to be trapped with one of these characters. Um, for a very, very long time, uh, let's get Count. Oh, you cheeky sods. You've added quite a bit of detail to Ireland. Um, right. So let's quickly talk about what you're actually seeing on the screen before we make any specific decisions. Oh, you know what it might be? There we go. We've got a couple of Irish kings. Although they're actually only considered two dukes for this purpose here. Um, this game is, and I cannot stress this enough, not a stereotypical, not a typical, not stereotypical, that's stupid. Not a typical uh, Paradox Grand Strategy game. First of all, please go away, Steam. Thanks, mate. Um, because you're not playing an individual, you're not playing a nation, you're playing a character. More specifically, a dynasty, but that's how you're playing. So. Ooh. No, we're going to take a 1066, that's what I said. Um, so what this means to you, the player, is that you can be a fairly minor character, like we are, we're a count, and still have a good time. We do want to be one of the more powerful counts, so we want one to have at least two provinces. Which gives us Domnall of Leeks. Lakes. Contrabar of Sildara. So if we click on someone, we get some we get some information. And this is actually telling us, somewhat annoyingly, that we need to buy DLC. Don't do that. Um, 
Oh, are you considered a republic? That's irritating. Oh, no, it's not. It's just a warning that you can't play republics. We're going to take this one because it appears to be slightly easier. Okay. Um, there are many, many easier places to play, for sure. But one of the things that makes Ireland a great starting position, indeed it's often called New Byland, is because while you still get the flavor of Crusader Kings 2, you rarely have to worry about imminent invasion from other powers. Um, it is entirely possible from Ireland to conquer the rest of the British Isles. Um, and there's other interesting things to do in the game, even if you don't get deeply enmeshed in England. Um, whereas someone like, say, a count in France could be potentially easier. You'll notice here the problem is um, there's different counts and they really should differentiate a little bit better, but... <laughs> If you have the Sword of Islam DLC, you can play as Muslims. Um, which is going to cut us out of most of the Middle East. Crusader Kings 2 does go out to India. Um, which is a new change for the game. Didn't exist before. And we can't play as Pagans without the old DLC. Otherwise, Rurik would be, was one of my favorite starts. Um, but we're going to go ahead and stick with what we know, which is Ireland. And we're going to pick this one. We're going to be the Earl of Sildara, Earl of Conchabar. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, again, it tells you in various places all the different play uh, DLC that you have. You'll notice that I own 99% of them. I just haven't enabled them for the purposes of our tutorial. Let's click play. Um, unless you have Iron Man mode on, Iron Man mode on, you can't get Steam achievements. Because this is a YouTube series, I don't feel comfortable turning on Iron Man mode. So, um, let's see here. Shadow Retreat is fine. No secret religious cults. Thank you. Uh, so what this does, this, this, one of the problems in earlier versions before the new, before the new expansion is that additional free content, you could start the game with someone with no kids, which basically means one bad move and your game ends within three years of starting, which isn't very fun. I recommend having this on. Um, and you want it on for everybody. Um, the Mongol Horde will leave on as, uh, as historical. We probably won't get that far into the game. Um, Exclave Independent Rulers. And we're just going to leave this off. So what this basically means is... Uh, exclaves is... Our little rulers that... I don't know what it's called. Exclave should be enclave. Because it should be within another country, not outside of any country. But regardless... Um, what this basically means is... If the setting is turned on, it makes it easier to keep your your territory solid but i think we're just gonna leave most of this on as uh as generic let's get going and here's a tutorial message now this tells you what it's like to be irish um different cultures have different abilities 
and different changes. Castle cities, temples, and forts. And we have to worry about the Pope. That's lovely. Uh, we're going to click on the political, the realms map mode. This makes it easy to see who we are. So here we go. We have um, two provinces that are our very own. Westmeath and Dunalang. Both of which offer us a certain amount of tax and a certain amount of protection against invasion. So, when you start a new game of Crusader Kings 2, the first thing you're going to want to do is look at your character. So that's what we're going to start with. This is Earl Conchabar. Um, please disable the hints. That's what I'm here for. Okay, that's very loud. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this is our character. One of the cool things I like about Crusader Kings 2 is if they're a real character that really existed that we have information on, you can click on Wikipedia and it'll give you some information about the player, the character, which is pretty cool. This is the home screen by all accounts and purposes because this is what determines um, how successful you are in the game. So let's go over each of the stats. And I think that's what this video is going to be talking about. We're just going to cover the Earl today. Talk about some of the basic mechanics. And the next episode, we're actually going to get into playing the game. We're not even going to unpause the game in this episode. And I think that's the best decision. Uh, to make this easy for newer players to learn from and accept. So here's our picture. We're a ugly dude. We actually hold two earldoms, um, which means uh, when we die, those will probably get split up among our kids, depending on the laws we have. But we're not going to worry about that for right now. <clears throat> so, uh, this is our wife. She looks pretty angry at us. Maybe we did something to deserve. Maybe we didn't. And this is our heir, uh, male Saclane Mac Conchabar. I apologize if you are Irish or Gaelic and I am butchering these names. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, apparently I had no mother, which raises interesting questions. It could be I have no legitimate mother. My grandparents are dead. I have two boys, a 21-year-old and a 23-year-old. And my half-brother is dead. That's a shame. Um... So we have some very important information right from the get-go. Without even clicking on or looking at any other things here. Uh, first of all, we are Catholic. And this the Catholic gameplay in Crusader Kings 2, because of the name, is probably the most developed of the religious groups. Um, Islam is pretty well covered in the way of uh, Sword of Islam DLC. Um... The Pagans are another very different flavor of the game. But my recommendation, the first time you play the game, is to play as a Catholic. Um, and I see that the guy with the weed whacker is back. Hopefully he'll leave in a moment. There he goes. Uh, we can also tell that we're in a feudal government. Um... Which basically is uh, all the uh, Christians in the game, uh, including the Orthodox Christians in the Byzantine Empire. We have no money. Oh, we don't have any loot, rather. We don't have any famous bloodlines, and we don't have any great works. I can lead armies. Um, why would you not have your, your king lead an army? For a very simple reason, you can die in battle. Um, continuing on here, we have domain size. Uh, we can hold a total of three, personally. As you become more powerful, uh, you will see that, um, that you'll get more and more domains. Um, which actually works to your benefit. One of the important aspects of Crusader Kings 2 is the ability to delegate. 
to tell individuals what they should be doing um, so that you have less to directly manage yourself. And there's a lot to do in the game. Uh, this is our vassal limit. Um, this is the number of vassals that you can have. Um, we don't have a vassal limit because we're a count, or in this case an earl because of um, English nomenclature for their feudal lords. There are no earls, there are no uh, counts, they're just earls. Most of this is we can have an infinite number of vassals below us because they're all going to be barons or chaplains or um, mayors. We quickly check may vassals. You'll see we have one bishop, two bishops, and we have uh, a mayor here. This guy doesn't like us more than he likes the Pope. So we're going to want to work on that so that he will then give us money. Because right now he's paying all of his taxes to the Pope, which is very sad. This is how many people we can raise. Um, one of the more important DLCs lets you have standing armies. But again, we're playing with base level CK2. So you don't have that option in this particular playthrough. We have 45 ducats, 20 prestige, and 10 piety. Now you can spend these things on various things as the game progresses. The meat of Crusader Kings 2 comes in the stat system. There are five stats in Crusader Kings 2. Uh, state Diplomacy, Martial, Stewardship, Intrigue, and Learning. Taking them top to bottom, Statementship is your ability to... Sorry, Diplomacy, sorry. Is your ability to make other people like you and to govern your realm, i.e. the people below you. The higher your diplomacy, the easier it is to keep your realm together. Very, very important. Um, Marshal is your ability to fight. It makes your troops better. It lets you have more troops. Everything about fighting falls into Marshal. Stewardship is earning money and managing your realm. So you can think of it this way. Diplomacy is relations with everyone else. Uh, every other character in the game's stewardship is managing the actual mechanics of the realm. We also have Intrigue, your ability to scheme and to plot and assassinate. And finally, we have Learning, your ability to get technology. And once your character has their base stats, their traits affect that. So we are a dutiful cleric, which means we're better at learning but worse at Intrigue. We are zealous. We get a boost to piety and martial. And churches like us more. But people with the opposite trait don't like us very much. Um, there, every trait has an opposite. And there will be issues with that. We are diligent. This is one of the seven uh, holy virtues. Um, and as you can see, it offers some pretty cool bonuses. We are shy, so we're not very good in personal combat, and we're not very good at diplomacy. Well, that's what we could be. And then we are temperate. So we are a pretty good, if not necessarily notable person. But here's what really matters. Uh, just because your ruler sucks doesn't mean that you're doomed. And this is not a great ruler by any stretch of the imagination. We don't have 10 in a, specific, in a single stat. But you get a bonus from your counselor, and you get a bonus from your spouse, which is really helpful. Otherwise, we'd be in a lot of trouble. Our personal combat is pretty shit, so we really don't want to fight any duels. We're also pretty old. We're 52, which in the Middle Ages is crazy old. Uh, forgive me for one second. I am getting a drink. There we go. Delicious. So, every character in the game has these stats. If we click on our wife, you will see that she's an amateurish plotter. She has a hair lip. She is cruel. But she is also diligent. Uh, she is very angry, which makes her good at fighting. But she's also trusting. I don't know how that works together, but it does. Um... 
Um, I'm going to turn down. The little, uh, here we go. Let's turn down the ambient sounds. Nope, that doesn't do it. What is making this stupid muttering sound? There you go. It's you can now hear what I'm saying better, hopefully. So, uh, you'll notice that our our principal heir is a uh, male Seshlan, pretty good fighter, pretty dumb. He is temperate, kind, brave, and extremely cynical, which is going to cause some issues down the line. He has a kid. And then he has his brother, who's a really good diplomat, okay at fighting, and pretty shaded everything else. So. <clears throat> the meat of Crusader Kings 2 is managing your relationships with the characters and your realm. That is what makes the game what it is. Because if you can't manage relations between yourself and the other characters, you're going to basically fail. Um, we've been talking a little bit about this video. I want to cover the council, and then I think we'll go ahead and end this first episode. I also want to keep this episode a bit on the shorter side. Um, so that you can very quickly uh, watch all the videos and ideally one or two sittings. And then get into playing the game. Um, our objective for this tutorial is going to try to be to unite Ireland, which is going to be difficult. And I don't think we're going to be able to manage it, but we're going to try. At the very least, I'd like to become a duke, because uh, that'll make our lives easier down the road a bit. Uh, we also have, uh, oh, these are just our titles. Okay. And you can see when you click on a title, it tells you who's going to inherit it, which is pretty handy. We have no claims. And we have no specific um, diplomatic relations. So we'll need to do something about that. Let's talk about the other aspect of the game that you'll need to be concerned about, which is your council. Uh, the council... Uh, is always comprised of five characters, unless you have some of the DLC. And you can see that we have our Chancellor, our Marshal, our Steward, our Spy Master, and our Court Chaplain. And these all provide us bonuses. You can see we have pretty sweet state learning as a result. And each one of them can take direct action to make the realm a little bit better. The Chancellor can improve diplomatic relations. They can fabricate claims. This is how you get additional territories and get CPs. And they can sow dissent. Marshals can suppress revolts, which reduces revolt risk, train troops to increase levy size, and research military attacks. Our steward can increase taxes, oversee construction to make things build quicker, and focus on tech. Spy masters can scheme, uh, which makes it easier to complete a plot successfully. We could build a spy network, and we can steal tech from other places. Finally, the court chaplain can proselytize, which converts people away from uh, heresies or infidelity. They can research cultural tech, and they can improve religious relations. Um, and we're going to want to make sure that the Pope likes us. So, before we conclude this uh, episode, let's go ahead and use some of our abilities. Well, this is cool. When you zoom out, it 
uses the names of uh, the major dynasties. You should it used to list like countries, which isn't terribly helpful. So we can see the Capes rule here. The Godwins rule here. So is this before or after William has attacked? Oh, so this is during the Norman Conquest. I see. Okay. We probably care at least a little bit what's going over there. Right. Um, the first thing we would like to do is we want to strengthen our realm. And how big are your levies? But you don't have to click on the character, don't I? This would be a tough fight. Um, but it is one we could theoretically... W oh god, he's really good at fighting. Never mind. What about you? Yeah, this is more manageable. So, we're going to try to get a claim on this territory to add another county to our... Um... And so what's going to happen is our Chancellor, each and every month, is going to try to... Uh, get it. Create a claim. Um... Uh, now, we would like to increase our levy size in uh, Sildara. So what's going to happen is he's going to train and he's going to make our levy a bit bigger. So we look at Dunalene now. Uh, it is has a levy of 450 and a levy of 370. Um, but as time progresses, uh, this will get bigger. So it's going to take some time. Steward, uh, collect taxes, please. Notice that we don't see any changes yet. Once we unpause, we would. Uh, schemes help you counter people scheming against you. Um, where building spy networks increases a plot power. I would like to study technology in Wessex. Let's learn what those crafty English are up to. And then finally, because I believe we have religious unity. Yep, everyone is Catholic. Uh, we're going to send you to make nice with the Pope. And there you have it. All of our counselors now have jobs. We can award minor titles to make people like us a bit better, and we'll get to that. Um, we need to figure out in our next episode uh, who we need to really work on to make them like us more. Um. But we're going to save that for next episode. Hopefully you guys uh, learned a bit about how the game works. Uh, next episode, we're going to begin um, starting to manage the realm. And I think that'll be very interesting. So until next time, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I bid you 